Now let's talk about increasing the percentage of winning trades. Um, and we do that with step three of prime trade select. And we use the 1% rule to select a put option strike price uh, that will result in a higher percentage of winning trades. So once you select a stock for an option purchase, you have to select an option strike price. And depending on the stock, there could be hundreds or even hundreds of thousands of strike prices available. So the question is, how do you determine which strike price to use? <clears throat> and option premiums consist of time value and intrinsic value. Now, each day before option expiration, the time value portion of an option decays and the greatest amount of time decay occurs in the last 30 days before option expiration. And at option expiration, option lose, options lose all time value and consist of only intrinsic value. And here's a, uh, a graph of a typical time decay characteristics of an option. And this line right here represents the time value portion of an option. And you can see that it decays as you get closer to option expiration. With the last 30 days, you have the most time decay. And then when you get to expiration, the time value goes to zero. So options lose all time value at expiration and consist of only intrinsic value. So when you buy an option, you're buying a decaying asset. So you always want to keep that in mind. And due to the time decay characteristics of options, when we buy an option, we want to minimize the time value, which will decay to zero, and we want to maximize the intrinsic value. So the overall goal is when you're choosing an option strike price is to minimize time value that will decay to zero and maximize the intrinsic value. And the, uh, the best way to minimize time value and maximize intrinsic value is to purchase in-the-money options. Um, in-the-money options have more intrinsic value and they have less time value than at-the-money or out-of-the-money options. And we'll show you an example of that. Um, this is a... Um, option chain for the QQQ NASDAQ ETF. And at the time we took the snapshot, the uh, QQQs were trading at 147. And this is a list of put option strikes here on this first column and the bid and ask price uh, for each uh, strike price. So with the QQQs trading at 147.57, uh, the closest strike price to the current price would be the 148 put. So that would be considered the at the money put. It's trading uh, closest to the uh, price of the ETF. Um, and the lower strike prices, the 147, 146, 145, they would be out of the money put options and the 149 and higher strike prices would be considered in the money for put options uh, with the QQQs trading at 147. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, in the money options have more intrinsic value and less time value than out of the money or uh, at the money uh, put options. So the way you calculate the intrinsic value of a put option is you subtract the strike price from the current price of the ETF. And if you subtract the uh, strike price from the current price, you get the intrinsic value. So here's a, another snapshot of that QQQ option chain. And what we did was we calculated the intrinsic value in this column and calculated the time value in this column. So in the first row here, we can see that the 148 strike put um, has an intrinsic value of 43 cents. 
And the way we calculated that was subtracting the current ETF price of 147.57 from the strike price of 148. So we subtract, subtracted the ETF price from the strike price, and we came up with 43 cents of intrinsic value. And as you, you can see, as uh, we get deeper in the money with the uh, put strikes, the uh, intrinsic value starts increasing and the time value starts decreasing. And the way you calculate the time value is you subtract the intrinsic value from the option premium. So in this column right here, we list the uh, time value. And the way that's calculated is you subtract the intrinsic value of 43 cents from the price of the option of 858. And we come up with a time value portion of 815 for the 148 strike put. So again, notice in as the option gets deeper in the money, um, here's the at the money strike right here, 148. So uh, 149 and higher, these are all in the money put options. And you can see the deeper you go in the money, uh, you can see that the intrinsic value starts increasing and the time value starts decreasing. So we developed a simple technique we call the 1% rule for selecting an in-the-money strike option when, when you're purchasing options. And the 1% rule utilizes a strike price that limits the time value portion of an option to less than 1% of the stock price. And if you do that, you'll be minimizing time value and maximizing intrinsic value. So what the 1% rule is, we want to limit the time value portion of an option to less than 1% of the stock price. And using our current uh, QQQ example, um, the QQQs were trading at 147.57. So 1% 1 of that would be 1.47 points. So what we want to do is limit the time value portion of that option to 1.47 or less, uh, which is 1% of the current um, ETF price. So we can see <coughs> the 168 strike put has a time value of 1.43, which is less than 1.47. So the, this, this 168 put would qualify because it's less than 1% of the current ETF price. And uh, the, the deeper you go into the money, uh, the less time value. So the 168, 169, 170 uh, strikes all have less than 1.47 points of time value. So they would qualify under the 1% rule. Now, if you limit the time value portion of a put option to less than 1% of the stock price, the stock only needs to decrease 1% in order for the put option trade to start profiting. And a 1% price decrease to profit, that has a much higher probability of being profitable than an at the money or out of the money strike price that requires the uh, stock to decline 5 to 10 percent or more in order to start profiting. So a uh, 1 percent move in the stock or ETF um, to the downside with a put option and we start profiting. So that's going to have a much higher probability of success than if the strike price required a 5 to 10 percent or even greater move in the ETF to start profiting. Uh, many times, the expected stock price move will not occur before option expiration. And when you use the 1% rule, the value of the option will increase $100 for each one point decrease in the stock or ETF price. And 
remember if you purchase an at the money or out of the money strike put option and the stock is flat uh, or up at option expiration it will result in a hundred percent loss of the premium so you always want to keep that in mind if you buy at the money or out of the money uh, strike puts and the stock closes flat uh, or closes up uh, you'll lose 100% of the option premium. So we try to avoid that. So using that 1% rule to select an option strike price uh, will increase your percentage of winning trades compared to trading at the money or out of the money strike puts. And this higher accuracy uh, will make you a more successful trader. So you always want to keep in mind the time decay characteristics of options and you want to select a strike price that only requires a 1% move in the stock in order for the option to start profiting. So let's look at an actual option trade um, and th that will demonstrate the uh, profit loss characteristics of the option purchase and illustrate the 1% rule we used for selecting the um, option strike price. This is a monthly price chart of the Chinese Internet ETF symbol uh, KWEB, and we can see the the monthly price drop below the 10-month simple moving average right here. So uh, KWEB was on a sell signal at that point. The major trend was down, and we used the 1% uh, rule to select the strike price. So this is this is a copy of our uh, brokerage statement um, and uh, this is the uh, orders uh, in our online brokerage account and you can see that we purchased um, the uh, KWEB 52 strike puts at 1350 so um, bought to open eight of the KWEB February 52 puts at 1350 and KWEB was tra uh, trading at 38.68 at the time we uh, purchased these puts. So the Hughes Optioneering team, uh, we designed a series of calculators to calculate the profit potential for six different types of option strategies. And these calculators allow us to know the profit loss potential of an option trade before we take the trade. And the calculators will calculate the profit potential for an option trade based on the price change in the underlying stock or ETF at option expiration. Now let's look at the put option calculator and you can see that we input uh, the current stock price of KWEB when we purchased the put was at 38.68 and you could see from the brokerage confirmation that we bought the 52 strike put at 13.50 so we input this into the calculator and then um, the, the calculator will calculate the profit potential based on the price of KWEB uh, ETF um, at option expiration, in this case, from a 30% decrease in the um, ETF to a 5% increase in the ETF. So it'll base the uh, profit, uh, it'll estimate the profit based on these different price changes in the ETF at option expiration. And the bottom row here lists the percent return for the option and the second from the bottom row right here lists the dollar return for the option. So we use this calculator to calculate the profit potential for this option purchase and we can see that if KWEB is down 30 uh, percent at option expiration we'll have an 84 percent return and an eleven hundred dollar uh, profit and if KWEB goes down 10% to 34.81, we'll have a $369 profit and a 27% return. So this will calculate uh, your 
return potential based on uh, various assumptions in the price movement of KWEB at option expiration. And the calculators will also calculate the time value portion of the option and the intrinsic value. So we purchased the uh, option for 1350 and it has 1332 of uh, intrinsic value and it has 18 cents of um, time value. So in this case, uh, if the option premium is 1350, the 1% rule would call for us to limit the time value portion of the option, or with the uh, ETF trading at 3868, uh, the 1% rule would limit the time value portion of the option to 38 cents. And you can see it's at 18 cents, so it's less than 1%, so this uh, trade qualified using the 1% uh, rule. So uh, the uh, 18 cents uh, of time value is less than 1% of the stock price and meets our criteria of limiting the time value portion to less than 1%. So this allows us to uh, minimize the time value and maximize the uh, intrinsic value. So in this example, uh, KWEB only the client only have to decline 18 cents in order for this trade to break even and start profiting. And we can see that if KWEB um, is down 1%, we'll actually have a profit for the uh, 1.5%. So again, that confirms uh, that we use the 1% rule because in this case, if the uh, ETF goes down 1%, we profit at 1.5%. And if the ETF is flat, we lose 1.5% uh, on the option. So that's an, another way to confirm the 1% rule is just to plug in a 1% decline, and we can see that the option would be profitable. So the analysis reveals um, a 1% decrease in the stock price uh, results in an option profit. 20% uh, decrease is a 56% return. 30% decrease is an 84% return. And a flat stock price is a 1.3% is a loss on the option. Um, our total risk is limited to the cost of the option, and the profit potential is um, unlimited. So let's uh, let's review the uh, advantages of uh, the, using the one percent rule. Um, if you use the one percent rule, the underlying stock or ETF only needs to decrease one percent at option expiration for the option trade to profit. Um, a one percent stock price decrease to produce a profitable option trade obviously is going to have a much higher probability of success than an at-the-money or out-of-the-money strike that can require the, the stock to decline 5, 10, 15 percent or greater uh, in order to uh, break even and start making money. So we, we like to select option strike prices that only require a 1 percent move in the underlying stock to start profiting. And many times the expected move in a stock to decrease 5 to 10 percent or more will not occur before option expiration, and this could result in 100% of uh, loss on your option trade, so we want to try to avoid that. So using the 1% rule to select an option strike price, that will increase your percentage of winning trades compared to trading at the money or out of money strike puts. And a higher percentage of winning trades can give you that discipline needed uh, to become a successful trader. So the put option strategy is um, one of the several strategies we use in down markets. And again, here's a, here's a snapshot of, uh, of down markets. They're, they're highlighted in yellow here. And you can see that the, uh, our advisory service uh, was profitable during the dot-com crash right here. Uh, was profitable during the market meltdown <clears throat> 2008, and it was profitable in 2018 when we had two major uh, corrections. 